Our cover story, Dado Banatao, Silicon Valley pioneer. Computing the way we know it with windows, mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of graphics. The issue of dual citizenship, being both Filipino and American. And in the spotlight, Women Power, the Filipino Women's Network. We are Filipinas uh -huh. and we're going to talk about, you know, our own issues. Plus the Expats Kitchen, brought to you by Seafood City. At home ako sayo. Silicon Valley, the hub of the computer revolution and of its pioneers, giants like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, is a stuff of legend. What isn't widely known is that a Filipino-American is among those pioneers, and his life is a stuff of legend too. I did innovation in the PC because we made the PC uh, what it is today. My company or companies and a whole bunch mm -hmm. of other companies including Microsoft yes. and Intel. The work that you know a whole bunch of us did years ago <laughs> finally became reality. So now we have millions of pieces. And then you formed your first company, Mastern? That point was before the beginning of the PC. Okay. I got involved with Ethernet mm -hmm. when, when uh, myself and my, uh, a few of my engineers uh, did the design. Mm -hmm. We worked with a company called 3Com. There I was making what they invented work. Mm -hmm. We designed two chips. Mm -hmm. There's the physical layer and then the what we call the Mac layer. This is just technical. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Through the interaction we actually did a lot of innovation there. Um, my company uh, through the work of uh, my group mm -hmm. we beat out Intel and, and um, AMD mm -hmm in coming out with that uh, solution for uh, 3Com. Wow. So that's where this first Ethernet came from. Your second company, mm -hmm. which goes down in history as one of the fastest IPO in U.S. stock market history. That's right. Um, we broke all records there. It was amazing. Uh, I read that yeah, yeah. within, uh, I think, the first quarter you had sold 12 million. It took me a year and my people oh. to design <laughs> <laughs> to design the product. Uh -huh. But the minute we said, okay, the products are ready, uh -huh. uh, in one quarter we sold 12 million. 22 months after starting the company, we took it public. <laughs> and it is now owned by? Intel. Intel. <laughs> Intel wanted to compete with us, but somehow they could not. Yeah. Finally, they had to buy the company. Now, your third startup, S3, was said to be the most profitable technology company in 1993. Out of all the breakthroughs that S3 came out with, what are you most proud of? The result. Um, computing the way we know it with Windows, mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of graphics, a lot of games, mm -hmm. you know, the internet, you know, you can open multiple windows. Yeah. Before graphics acceleration, and of course before Windows, mm -hmm. you know, we had basic characters and it was not very good. I looked at where the PC was and this is not going to catch up if mm -hmm. it's not going to get done, the graphics, I mean. Mm -hmm. I decided I'm going to solve that problem. Yeah. Uh, so I did, that's how S3 got started. And in between 2002 and 2006, you were on the Forbes Midas list of the top 100 investors in uh, high-tech and life sciences industries. Now as managing partner of Tallwood. Our practice is in semiconductors. Okay. And we do that simply because of our experience. Mm -hmm. We look at your question, we look at what's interesting in the semiconductor okay. space. In 1993, Dado Banatao was conferred the Ellis Island Medal of Honor by the National Ethnic Coalition of Organizations and the Distinguished Asian Leadership Award by the Asian Business League. And in 1997, he was named by Ernst & Young and Merrill Lynch Business Financial Services as Master Entrepreneur of the Year. How did Dado Banatao get to where he is 
from his humble beginnings in a farm in Tuguegarao, Cagayan. More about our cover story in just a bit. Diosdado Dado Banatao was born in Barangay Maladbak in the town of Igig in Tugigarao, Cagayan. The son of a farmer, he worked as a sacristan to be able to study at the Ateneo de Tugigarao. After high school, he took up electrical engineering at the Mapua Institute of Technology in Manila. This was his introduction to technology. So when you were at Mapua, that was your first encounter with the IBM computer? We had uh, the beginnings of Fortran mm -hmm. um, language. Mm -hmm. We uh, were able to solve some basic problems, but to do that, you have to interact with the machine. There, there were toggle switches on, uh -huh. the, on the panel. You have to, at the right time, toggle the switches. Wow. Because there are some conditions that you use for your program to branch or jump to another place mm -hmm. in your program. But fresh out of college though, that wasn't quite what you were doing because you initially started out as a, a pilot trainee for Philippine Airlines. Oh, at that young age, I don't know, I was just not quite ready for mm -hmm. serious, serious engineering things. Yeah. And one day, I saw this ad uh -huh. <laughs> in the newspaper about Philippine Airlines looking for uh, interviewing for pilot trainers mm -hmm. and I interviewed. How did Boeing find you? Because that was the whole reason for your move to the United States. One day during my training mm -hmm. uh, at Philippine Airlines, I stopped by Mapua. Mm -hmm. One of my electronics instructors or teachers uh, mentioned that, hey, uh, Boeing is hiring engineers, you uh -huh. should um, apply. I just filled it out, sent it in two weeks, they accepted it, and they said, we will begin to process your uh, visa. Motivated by the developing computer revolution, Dado decided to pursue his master's degree in engineering and computer science at Stanford University. Your first job out of grad school was at National Semiconductor. And what was your role with the company? I was a design engineer. Uh, the title was member of technical staff. And the rest, as they say, is history. Dado Banatao is reported to be a bona fide billionaire. Among his perks is a personal jet, which he flies himself occasionally. But he and his wife Maria have not forgotten their roots and their social responsibilities. In 2007, you pledged $4 million to the Asian Pacific for scholarships for young Filipino Americans who are pursuing careers in engineering as well. Yes, that is a scholarship program that okay. <clears throat> my wife and myself mm -hmm. um, started. Uh -huh. Our idea always is to get the student mm -hmm. and the family motivated enough to be part mm. of the solution. You're also uh, you're on the board of the Ayala Foundation USA. Right now, we have a project called Gilas. Okay. That uh, needs some funding, and the program is a, uh, a sponsor to uh, supply or to buy uh, computers for a it's high school in the of, Philippines. Uh, in the Philippines, okay. of their choice, so that that school can be connected to the internet. So what are some of your, your hopes for the Philippines? We need to get the country to uh, love science. Mm -hmm. So that's why I am so focused in starting with the educational system yeah. in science and engineering. Yeah. I would like to see uh, the country become uh, a developed country. 